Whether you're a busy business executive or a stay-at-home mom, I'm sure coffee plays an important part in your daily routine. With over 500 billion cups of coffee sold globally each year, no wonder it's the second most traded commodity in the world. But have you ever stopped to wonder what an incredible journey these coffee beans take from the hillsides and the far side of the globe until the time it reaches your breakfast table? This is the story of coffee. Whoa, whoa, things will be better in the morning. According to legend, coffee was discovered by an Ethiopian goat herder named Kaldi. When he discovered his normally lethargic goats were a little bit more excitable when they ate the berries from this evergreen tree. But it was the Dutch who first spread the coffee plant to Central America. And this is where our journey begins. Coffee first arrived in Colombia in 1730, brought in by the Jesuits in the northeastern part of the country. Colombian coffee mainly grows in the Andes Mountain, from north to south, and has exported to 45 countries throughout the world, including France, Germany, Switzerland, Italy, and Japan. The story of coffee here in Colombia is different, not just because of the coffee bean, but because it's come the bedrock of communities. Maria is a coffee farmer and works the land she has taken over from her parents. I have to say, what a view. I mean, it's absolutely stunning. Can you tell us a little bit about daily life operating a coffee farm? I wake up every day at 8 a.m. and get my child and nephew ready for school. Then I make breakfast for them and my husband. During harvest, I also make breakfast and lunch for people who come here to work. We spent all day picking the coffee beans and processing them. We do this twice a day, and then we weigh the coffee. My role is mainly to look after the other people who work here during the harvest. Do you find it a big responsibility um, taking over the farm from your parents? The biggest legacy that my parents gave me was their knowledge of coffee. However, the biggest responsibility is to maintain the coffee farm for my children and to keep producing coffee the way they told me to do it. Coffee production in Colombia has the reputation of being the best in the world, producing mild, well-balanced coffee beans. What do you think makes Colombian coffee so good and so different? Mostly it's because of the people, the farmers. It brings families and communities together. It's also the characteristics in the environment. And the diversity in the local terroir in the country makes Colombian coffee taste so unique. Can you tell us a little bit about the importance of protecting the future of quality coffee here in Colombia? The good varieties planted here are precious. They are in danger because of climate factors. So, we have to preserve the environment. The AAA sustainability program was created to protect the soil and improve the quality of life of the farmers. The average annual coffee production here in Colombia of 11.5 million bags is the third highest in the world after Brazil and Vietnam. Over 500 billion cups of coffee are consumed throughout the world. Over 90% of coffee production takes place in developing countries, while consumption happens mainly in industrialised economies. Most Colombian coffee is grown in the coffee growing Axis region. So, where are we going to plant this next coffee harvest? Coffee plantations cover about 690,000 hectares, spread through 694 coffee towns. The most common varieties are Tipica, Bourbon and Katura. Oh. It's much more labour intensive culture than alternative crops in the same region. And as it's not automated, it's time consuming. Okay. Okay? Okay. Ah. 
Good? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Like many of Colombia's greatest coffee producing regions, ours is situated high up in the mountains where a unique microclimate protects the production of the finest quality coffee. The farmers who live and work here operate small farms of around two to three hectares each and the landscape is challenging. As a result, the farmers are not always protected and are vulnerable to a range of external factors. So here we are in the tropics, like it's beautiful sunshine, really hot, but when it rains, it really, really rains. So what do you do to combat against that and the soil erosion and mudslides? The benefits that the tree nos brinda ante las condiciones climáticas extremas, in el caso de the trees help to stop soil erosion because when they grow, they stand solid, which helps against mudslides. And in the summer months, they give shadows, so it also helps with the growing of the crops. In this microclimate, these mountain trees keep the crop healthy and they retain water which keeps the soil moist. Can you tell us how the agroforestry program helps reduce carbon footprint and pollution? The trees help reduce the carbon footprint as the tree starts the chemical process of photosynthesis and captures that carbon that people create. Also, the trees help to clean the water and decontaminate the water through their roots. Around the world, there are nearly 3.2 million coffee farmers and 14 million people depend on the coffee growing industry. While the industry is experiencing huge growth, there are challenges facing the coffee business. I'm on my way to meet Santiago, who's been working with coffee growing communities here in Colombia for some time now. He also heads up the AAA Sustainability Quality Programme. So what's AAA all about? Triple is about a long commitment in order to for us to secure the coffee with the farmers. The first A is quality, so it's about getting the highest quality coffee. We train the farmers in good agricultural practices related to quality, so we get a really good quality coffee. The other A is sustainability. It's about taking care of the people, the community, their families, their kids. Yeah and the environment. So it's producing coffee, taking care of those two things. And the other day, the third day is about farm management or productivity. It's about having the farms a really a good business to produce more coffee, but higher income. The AAA Sustainable Quality Program is an espresso program. It's the way we secure our coffee, the way that we work with our farmers. The main part of the program involves agronomists coming here to teach me new techniques and better ways of farming that ensures the quality of the coffee. And I have learned a lot. Before this, I didn't have that technical support from these people who come here and teach me. So, before I didn't have that quality in my coffee and the expertise. Now things are much better. Before, I didn't have the composting section of the coffee pulp, but now I do. And I just want things to keep getting better. With these methods of best practice, they have definitely helped the farm in a much better way. The AAA Sustainability Quality Program benefits all facets of Colombian life, and one of these is education. Buenos dias. Van a repetir la canción que les enseñó el profesor Osvald. Like football, coffee is such an important part of Colombian society, and it starts right now at primary school level. El café que se recoge aquí. The coffee that is picked here in school is sold and the money is used to buy some sports equipment, like soccer balls and nets. 
Also, if there is a small surplus, then that money goes to providing some lunches for less well-off children. All the children here are the sons and daughters of coffee farmers. Once they sell the cherries, they get money and also they consume the coffee that they grow. Economically, it benefits them and their villages. That's why it's so important for their economy. Coffee is crucial to the economies and politics of many developing countries, and Colombia is no exception. Its cultivation, processing, trading, transporting and marketing provide employment for hundreds of millions of people worldwide. For many of the world's least developed countries, exports of coffee account for more than 50% of their foreign exchange earnings. So we're standing here in the field of all these little saplings. What type of coffee do you grow here? The coffee that we grow here is only Arabica and the variety is Castillo. How old are these saplings now and how long will it take before they start producing cherries for harvest? It takes six months. We only harvest twice a year. How often do you replant and is there a certain time of year that's more suitable for doing that? For example, the coffee when we replant the trees every seven years. After this, the quality of the coffee is bad. So, we cut the trees down. So you better show me. If the cherries are green, you don't pick them. But when they are dark red, then it's time to harvest them. So how long does the whole harvest process take? Two months. Two months. I'm 74 years old. Sometimes my daughter and my grandchildren and my neighbours help. Santiago, I've been on the farm and while I was talking to the farmers they were mentioning that the younger generations, I suppose their children, are looking to get involved in, in coffee farming. And they mentioned that there was the Farmer Future program. In Colombia, there's no pension on the field. There's no pensions on coffee. So farmers, when they reach their retirement age, they have no more things to do to stick to their, to their farms. So with this program, what we are giving is giving an opportunity to the farmers with a, a saving fund to get retired at the normal age as they get retired. We have up to today around 1,000 farmers that joined the program and we are expanding the program to other regions. In Caldas, we started in Aguadas, we are moving to municipalities uh, close to Aguadas and we are moving to other clusters in Colombia like Nariño and Cauca. So basically it continues the cycle of coffee farmers and coffee production and I suppose um, it'll, it'll really benefit the Colombian government and the Colombia full stop. So as soon as they have this opportunity to leave their, half, their farm, have an income through the saving plan, they get the opportunity to the new kids, to the new generation, and then that will continue. New, this new generation, they will get old, and the new, new generation will start with the, with, with, they will continue with the, with the coffee. So the coffee will continue, and so the business in Colombia will, will remain. So it's, it's like securing the future of the coffee farms and the coffee families. Now that we have planted, grown, and harvested our crop, the next stage of our journey is the processing of the beans. This is the wet mill. This is where the farmers have the option to bring the whole ripe cherries for sale instead of processing from their own farms. Roberto, why do you use the wet mill as opposed to processing the coffee yourself in your own farm? Si, para nosotros, vender café acá es un gran negocio para nosotros. For us to sell our coffee here is good business. We are saving water and on the farms we waste a lot of it. Here the drying process and the washing process is also faster and even taking the pulp out is also faster. Has there been a benefit to the grading of your coffee since you started using the wet mill? porque this allows us to guarantee the good quality that we are looking for. Even from the young people's view, it's better because they don't have to wake up really early to dry the coffee in the farm. 
so we bring it here for all that process. So it's win-win. The wet method intensifies the aromatic flavours of coffee and reduces its bitterness. Coffees processed using the wet method are described as washed. They are almost always hand-picked Arabicas and referred to by the name Miles. Firstly, the coffee goes through several visual tests to gauge the quality of the farmer's yield. After the cherry is put into the receiving tanks, it is pumped by water into the cleaning channel where leaves and debris are taken out. The cherries then move on to a flotation tank where the high grade coffee, which floats, is separated from the lower grade cherries, which don't. The transport screw device transports the high grade coffee cherries to a pulping machine below and this separates the cherries from the beans. The cleaned and washed beans are then transported to fermentation tanks where the coffee is held for several hours before bringing it on to the central mill and the next stage of coffee processing. Another method for processing coffee beans is the dry method. At the dry mill, the coffee is laid out in vast polytunnels like this to allow it to dry. The drying is sometimes helped by solar panel systems. This darkens the coffee in colour. Following on from the wet milling process, this is one of the final stages in coffee production before the coffee gets bagged and shipped to Europe. The beans are brought to a series of machines and conveyor belts that move it through the sorting and cleaning process. Much like the wet mill, the first stage is sorting much of the debris that is found unwanted in coffee sacks. The beans are then channeled through machines, which sort size and quality grade. There is an unwavering commitment to the quality throughout all stages of the coffee's journey, from its country of origin to the moment it reaches your cup. This is why our coffee experts carry out checks prior to bagging the coffee, prior to its transportation and again on its arrival. These are just some of the lengths we go in order to obtain exceptional coffee. There's even a machine that can detect a single bean which may not fit the coffee profile by firing a laser through a stream of beans travelling at ultra high speed. The machine then rejects these beans and only the premium quality beans are allowed through to the bagging stage. So here we are at the cupping process with Oscar, where we're going through, I suppose, checking all the different quality checks to start the coffee process. Firstly, the coffee's roasted, then grinded. Exactly 11.5 grams of coffee goes into five cups per batch. Brings water temperature to exactly 92 degrees and then fills each cup and the coffee is allowed to sit for around five minutes till the temperature just slightly drops. Firstly, it's a fragrance check where, where the coffee is smelt at its dry stage. So here we are at the next test. This is the aroma test. This is where the water has been added to the dry coffee. Let's sit for five minutes and then we're checking has the fragrance changed from the dry to the actual wet. Same again. So now the foam on the top of the coffee, the sediment is removed to make way for the taste. So the final stage, the tasting stage, this is where we're checking for the acidity, the body, the sweetness and the aftertaste. At this stage it's important to, when you're tasting, to suck loads of air through your mouth so the flavour profiles coat your whole mouth and you use all your taste sensations. So why do, you, why, why do we taste five? Okay. The important thing is the taste consistency and flavour in each of the five cups of coffee. The same taste and consistency in each cup. And have these ones made the grade? It's a good cup of coffee. We can say it has good flavour, good acidity and good sweetness. That is the important thing we want. So you can see throughout this whole process, from crop to cup, how Nespresso maintained the highest quality coffee. Coffee is bagged in hessian bags that are loosely woven, allowing air to pass through over the beans, keeping them fresh on their final journey. The bags themselves are 70 kilo bags and are hand painted with a batch number for quality reasons. The number keeps a track of the country and the region of origin that the beans in the bags are from. Throughout the year, 
Coffee experts travel the world in search of the finest quality beans from small coffee producers. Particular care is taken in selecting countries that supply the coffee used in its blends. I'm holding on for dear life here with the farmer on the way to the purchasing point to see what happens next. Here we are at the purchasing point where all the farmers bring their coffee, the quality is tested and the sale of coffee begins. Market day at the regional cooperative purchasing point is always busy. All morning long farmers have been coming in their droves with massive sacks of coffee to be tested. This is where they check the quality and the density of the coffee and hopefully the farmer goes away with the best price possible. So on the board behind me you can see the price of all the coffees that come in. The standard price is dictated by the New York Stock Exchange and then additional premiums are on top of that with Nespresso Rainforest Alliance being the top paid premium coffee. Coffee is also bought and sold as a commodity on the New York Stock Exchange. The importance of coffee to the world economy cannot be overstated. It is one of the most valuable primary products in world trade, second in value only to oil as a source of foreign exchange. There's no shame in coming second to oil. Coffee is worth over $100 billion to the world economy, putting ahead of gas, gold and corn. Again, the farmer's yield is taken and measured up in terms of quality and consistency. This gives the farmer an overall indicator of how much premium coffee he or she has. From the very start, I didn't really know what to expect to the, to the first time I seen the coffee cherry um, right the way through. And I suppose the key points that really resonate with me is the meaning, the true meaning of the word sustainable um, and Rainforest Alliance, what that actually means when you see that little tree frog logo on packets. And I suppose the food industry is, is covered with, with meaningless words on packaging. Um, but those two words are, are very important and I realise that now. Um, sustainable means a premium to the farmers, they have future crops, the environment is protected and he's going to be able to make coffee long into distance and pass that down to his children so his children have a future and an income. An amazing thing I've also discovered in this journey is from the time the coffee cherry is harvested, so from the time the farmer literally picks that cherry off the tree to the time it's in our shops and we buy and we completely take it for granted. The Nespresso coffee has went through over 70 different quality checks. And that's not including all the checks that the agronomists do on the farm from soil to planting the tree to the growing of the cherry tree right up to, to the harvest point. I had no idea how rigorous the process was, how much went into producing really, really high quality coffee. I suppose I just took it for granted. The coffees are mainly transported by boat. Upon its arrival to Europe, the green coffee is assessed to check its condition after shipping, as the beans are sensitive to humidity and odours. This procedure enables us to check the conformity of the coffee's sensorial characteristics, the degree of humidity and the quality of the coffee beans delivered. A key part of coffee's journey is the roasting of the beans. The, the process of, of roasting is super important in the whole, in the whole chain of events. The actual roasting process kind of turns those green beans into, into what people recognise as being the, the brown kind of um, beans that appear in the, in the, in the grinders in, in all the cafes. The, the beans are going into the, into the, the hopper in, in the top of the oven. They, they go down into the, into the drum. It's basically worked on a drum system like a tumble dryer with, with, with gas burners underneath it. When, when temperature is up to, to 180 degrees, um, we drop the beans down. Um, and then they, they'll actually turn in that drum for a period of around 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how long the, we want the, the coffee to stay in the oven, the, what we're looking for from the actual beans, and that the actual size maybe of the, of the beans themselves, so some contain more moisture and will we'll need a little bit more time in the oven. There's a, there's a cracking process that starts happening 
within the beans once they once they get to a certain temperature. Moisture is 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 coming off the coffee. Caramelization is happening. We have a fan in the in the in the cooling tray, and and the heat is basically sucked out of the beans as 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 quickly as possible. So within that space of a couple of minutes, that coffee is right down to to to, to temperature. Specialty coffee represents about 10% of what's grown globally every year. There's about 4,000 tonnes of coffee consumed in, in Ireland um, last year and uh, young people especially are willing to pay the, a, a premium for, for, for excellent coffee. Coffee is now ingrained in our society and our culture. No wonder there are so many coffee shops opening throughout the country. I think what happens in, in, in everyday life now is that people are looking to socialise in a non-alcoholic way. People have work, which is their first space or home. We tend to call our third space the place where we go to socialise. Now, it may be just to meet a friend for coffee, it may be to have a, a social meeting, uh, some kind of social gathering, just to play cards, or just to have a, t a chat, even just to help someone with their own mental health, just to get out for a bit of time. So that's why coffee shops, I think, are, there's a huge focus on mental health and just having social space and having that third place to go to, which used to be a pub, but is now the daytime coffee shop. The, the food and beverage industry in Ireland is worth about six and a half billion. Um, and coffee is, or the coffee market itself is 5% of that. At least they were the figures up to 2015. Um, and we certainly would see in our own business, coffee culture, that our, our own growth is around 14 to 15% year on year. In 2016, Ireland hosted the World Barista Championships for the first time. Over 60 countries were represented and the world's experts of coffee gathered. Uh, the competition itself is quite intense. Uh, the barista normally prepares 12 drinks and presents them to a number of judges. You will have four sensory judges, so they're in, you know, there to taste and to evaluate the drink from a sensory perspective. You will have technical judges who are looking at their actual workflow, cleanliness, efficiency, hygiene, uh, keeping their workstation tidy. And then you will have a head judge who, who uh, monitors everything. Um, so it's all delivered within a 15 minute presentation, four espresso based drinks, four milk based drinks, and then four speciality drinks, which might be a, a combination of a, a fruit based drink or a, a brewing uh, method. And so in order to get to this standard and to this level, Bruce has put in a, a, an amazing amount of practice and time and dedication. What we see in society is that people are much more educated when it comes to coffee, much more educated when it comes to wine, in terms of their own sensory experiences and what they, what they see, and, and definitely in terms of how they've travelled and what they're, what they're taking back from other cultures. So, to the age-old question, how should we drink our coffee? With milk, sugar or black? I think in reality there's a lot of um, preconception about how we should drink coffee but, the, but in reality the way people want to drink coffee is actually the, probably the first place to start. How do you like your coffee and why do you like your coffee that way and that's part of what we want to do when we create this range of coffees is think about them, yes on their own, how can I drink that as a ristretto, an espresso or a lungo, but also how is this going to work as a recipe? How am I going to, if I add milk and different types of milk, is that going to change the profile? Because ultimately a coffee is a sensory experience and that sensory experience can be enhanced by adding milk to it or it can be perfectly, perfectly intact if you leave it on its own and either works. The term Grand Cru we use is directly lifted from the world of wine. The term itself means great growth, literal translation from Grand Cru. Um, it's very specific to certain regions within certain countries. And that really parallels with the way that we source coffee and how we put together blends. So once you combine these very special origins and then specific regions, and we would refer to them as terroir, the, which is exactly the same term we use in wine, you, and add to that the mastery of blending and roasting, we think that's the right term to use. So there you have it, from the humble bean discovered by an Ethiopian shepherd boy, to a drink enjoyed by millions of people worldwide, to a connoisseur's moment of pleasure. Coffee has come a long way from its humble beginnings, and it's incredible to discover just what goes into our country's favourite pick-me-up. And the reggae man the best he can.